Hello, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and today I want to talk about two things. Number one, a cyanotype, and number two, an action, and more importantly, creating a cyanotype action. So cyanotypes uh, were an effect that you could do in the digital, or sorry, not digital, but the 35 millimeter world, when you were processing a black and white photo, you could create a, uh, a cyan looking photograph by processing it in uh, different chemicals other than what they, the uh, photo paper was intended for, which would create a cyan like effect in your blue and in, in your shadow and midtone areas, creating a bluish effect. Now, it wasn't always blue. You could you could come out with multiple colors. Some came out purple. Um, just go ahead and do a Google image search on cyanotypes, and you can come up with all kinds of stuff. So, creating an action is going to be the first part that we're going to have to go over, and then once we get into that, we'll do the cyanotype. So let's dive into it. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the original file and go to Window and go to Actions. I have this little guy right here in my navigation pane that automatically pulls out my actions and you can put it there as well. If you don't have it there, you can press Alt F9 or go to Window and go to Actions. So in the Actions pane here, you're going to see uh, all different presets that Photoshop has set up for you. They already have a bunch of different actions in there. I don't know if I have any of those on mine anymore, but when you open up those folders, there are different actions here that when you press play, they will work on the photograph that you're working on. They will uh, have the same effect every time when you press play. That is if the action was recorded correctly. So we're going to go ahead and create a cyanotype one. The first thing we want to do is create a new set. So I'm going to create a new set of actions right here by clicking this little folder. And I'm going to call mine blog experiments. Now, you can name it whatever you'd like. If you have a blog and you do action experiments, go ahead and name it blog, blog experiments. Do it. I dare you. If you don't, you can call it whatever you'd like. Um, I don't know if your name is Mike. It can be Mike's actions. Like me, I have Blake's actions up there and Blake's effects. So just press OK when you've created that new set. Now we need to create a new action within that set of actions. So right down here, it looks like a new layer icon. Click that, it's actually creating a new action. This pane right here is asking you, uh, this uh, dialog box is asking you, what do you want to call it? Where do you want it to be uh, uh, posted? And if you want a function key to go with it, you can, uh, you can, you can select one. Um, and if you want uh, that to be a certain color, you can go ahead and select that as well. I usually just leave mine all alone and name will be uh, cyanotype. Now, if we press record, the minute we press record, uh, we're kind of locked in here. If we make any mistakes along the way, it's going to record every mistake. If we open up a different file along the way, it's going to open up that, try to open up that file every time you press play on that action. So you kind of have to know what you're going to do and uh, every step of the process, because if you don't, you can mess up the action. So I, what I do is I usually, uh, make the action multiple times beforehand and write down every step so that when I'm ready to go and go ahead and do that effect in the action, I, just, I have it all written down and I just go verbatim. That way I don't make any mistakes. Now you can make a function key set to it too. So you can go like uh, Shift F2 and it will always do that when you press Shift F2. That's, that's up to you. Or you can just save it in the actions and go to the actions every time. So press record. So the first thing we want to do with the cyanotype is get a nice baseline black and white image to go with. And my favorite black and white image is a gradient map. It just creates a very nice, strong depth black and white photograph. So before I do that, I want you to pay attention to my color palette over here. I have yellow selected as my foreground color and black selected as my background color. Just pay attention to that. You don't have to set yours to black and yellow. Um, now, go to the Create New Fill or Adjustment layer and go to Gradient Map. The reason why I didn't want you to do that is because it turns it yellow and black. Now, we don't have a black and white image. We have a yellow and black image, and it doesn't look very good. And what happened was it took that yellow and replaced all of my dark tones with yellow, and it took the black and replaced all of my lights with black. And it's really easy to fix. You just click on this gradient anywhere on that gradient and press that gradient that makes it black and white. It's a black and white gradient now. Press OK. So now, it by default, we'll have it selected on the mask here, 
select off of the mask. Just click on, on the uh, RGB channel of that gradient map. So now we're going to go to select and go to color range and go to midtones. So now we're selecting all the midtones that are in this image. Now we want to go to the new adjustment layer again and select solid color. Now in that solid color, you get the option to pick a color if you'd like. Um, I already have the colors pre-selected and those colors for the midtones are going to be 4, 3, 5, 0, 6, F as in Fox. Again, that's 4, 3, 5, 0, 6, F as in Fox. Now that is the web uh, color. It's just easier that way. Instead of telling you 67 red, 80 green, and 111 blue, 4, 3, 5, 0, 6, F. Now press OK. It looks ugly right now, and it's supposed to look ugly right now. We're going to fix that. Go ahead and select the layer mask here, and under the feather area, go ahead and put 35 as your feather. That's going to take our mask and kind of feather the edges. It's going to it's going to blur the edges a little bit to make them blend a little bit better. Now we're going to select back on the RGB channel of the color fill and go to soft light. So it's looking better now, and we have like a kind of like a cyanotype, but we need to push it a little bit further. So now with that RGB layer selected, go to select color range and go to shadows. Press OK. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create a new adjustment layer and go solid color. Now this solid color, we're going to want to go down to that web box and go to 0, 6, 2, 5, 5, 9. Again, that's 0, 6, 2, 5, 5, 9. And press OK. There's a reason why I talk like a robot. It's easier to understand a robot. That's why robots talk like that. OK. Now select that mask and change the feather to 35 pixels. OK. Still looks kind of ugly. But if we go to soft light, it starts to look better. Now, we're almost done with the cyanotype. It almost looks right. So what we want to do now is create a new layer, a new adjustment layer and make that a curves adjustment layer. Now I want to take the dark curve and pull it up just a little bit and start to pull out some um, some light in those shadow areas because it was a little too dark, a little too dark for my liking for a cyanotype and that might be a little too light so you can pull it down just a little bit. Input 51, output 69-ish. Now, once you're done with your action, you're completely done, press stop. If you don't press stop, everything you do from now on will be recorded. So make sure you press the little stop icon. And once you're done, you can close out that action. So the way actions work, not to be intimidated, here's a folder. This folder contains an action. In that action, the action is called a cyanotype. That's our action that we just created. When we open up the action, all this stuff listed here, as intimidating as it looks, was just every step that we recorded all the way through. So now the true test is does it work on a different photograph? So let's pull up a different photograph and press play. Cross your fingers, it worked. Let's pull up another photograph, just for fun, and press play. And it worked. So now we have our cyanotype. All right. That was a little rundown on cyanotypes and creating actions. Again, you're hearing this from everydayhdr.com. If you're on the website, thank you. If you're on YouTube, hey, thank you again. If you like what you're seeing here on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because every Friday I try to do a new uh, tutorial uh, that's usually something Photoshop related. If you don't see a new tutorial, chances are I might have done a, um, a written tutorial on my blog or put some type of tip up that Friday on my blog. So go ahead and go to everydayhdr.com. Good to check both of them. Um, I try to post fresh content every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Again, this is EverydayHR.com. I'm Blake. Have a great weekend. Play with these cyanotypes, play with these actions, create more actions, have fun with it, and see if they work. That's the beauty of actions is that you're going to mess up 100 times, and that's good because I messed up 100 times while I was doing this tutorial. So now it's your turn. Have a great weekend, everyone.